Hello and welcome to Devil's Advocate in a special two-part interview with the former Prime Minister of Pakistan, Benazir Bhutto. Earlier this month, the Charter of Democracy she signed with her arch-rival Nawaz Sharif came into effect. Later in part two of this series, I shall talk to Ms. Bhutto about what the Charter means for relations with India and the Kashmir dispute. But first today, what does the Charter mean for Pakistan, for Ms. Bhutto herself and the restoration of democracy? Ms. Bhutto, you signed a Charter of Democracy with Nawaz Sharif which began and to take effect on the 2nd of July this year. Yet for 17 years he's been your principal political rival and practically all the cases that you face were instituted against you by him or his government. Today, do you trust Nawaz Sharif, or is this simply a matter of mutual political convenience? Firstly, Mr. Nawaz Sharif and I have been in politics a long time, and uh, both in opposition and in government, we gained experience, which we believe can help us draw up a common vision for the future of Pakistan on building institutions, giving justice, and having peace in the region. Secondly, the cases that were instituted against me were instituted by the military establishment, which used different political personalities. Forgive me, but they Please were instituted by the National Accountability Bureau headed I by Saifur Rahman. I want to answer the question. Secondly, they were instituted by the military uh, establishment, which the had formed... Prime Minister. It was established by the military establishment, which had formed a front organization known as the National Accountability Bureau after overthrowing my government in 1996 under President Farooq Lagari. And third, Ms. Mr. Bhutto, Nawaz Sharif and I believe that the Charter Ms. pledges Bhutto, us let to let me remind you what you said to ask Nawaz me three Sharif. questions. I should then be asked one question because it seems to me... Oh, I asked you only that, one question. Do you no, trust the him? one question Do you had trust three... Him? Of course, I trust his commitment to a common future as we have signed in the Charter of Democracy. Can I quote to you what you said to the BBC program Hard Talk Pakistan? Nawaz Sharif was a more brutal fascist than General Musharraf is. And in my party, from Khyber to Karachi, people think Musharraf is a better dictator than Nawaz Sharif. And then you added, what Nawaz Sharif did when he was working for the generals was to trample democracy. It is a bitter part of our tragic history. Yes, that's true. We have a very tragic history where the military establishment has intervened time and again, and each time that they have mm, But I'm talking of Nawaz Sharif, you're talking of the military establishment. Yes, because you don't seem to understand the point I'm trying to make because you don't let me complete my sentence. Which is? The military establishment has played havoc with Pakistan's destiny by repeatedly intervening through different front people. Therefore, when General Musharraf first came, there was a sigh of relief on behalf of people before he embarked on repeating the mistakes of the military establishment. Ms. Bhutto, so you're on the 17th me, of May, two days after the Charter of Democracy was signed, and then he repeated it again on the 18th, Nawaz Sharif refused to express regret for any of the cases brought against you, and he refused to say that they were fabricated. And yet, this is the man with whom you've today allied? You see, I think you're misinformed. There is a talk that Mr. Nawaz Sharif gave in front of all the parties of the Alliance of Democracy, and he talked about the politically motivated cases. It's available in the political statement that was issued by the ERD following Mr. Nawaz Sharif's talk. And Nawaz Sharif I would like you to have it. But one thing publicly I publicly must... accused you and your husband of buying Rockwood Estate. It was an allegation that you said at the time was complete nonsense and malice. Yet it actually has affected your standing the world over. Have you forgiven him for all that he's done? I have already answered your question. I have told you that in Pakistan there are two forces: the military establishment and the democratic forces. The military establishment has used and propped up different leaders from time and time so to oppose democracy. So he was a part of the military establishment when he established these cases against you, and yet today you're allying with As the As I Pabit. mentioned, that the cases were established in 1996 under President Farooq Lighari, who was first supported by the establishment to overthrow my government before you're Mr. Nawaz Sharif came. You're determined to whitewash came. Nawaz Sharif today and forget all that you said about him? That would be incorrect. I stand by what I said, but I would like you also 
to understand the intricate politics of Pakistan, where there is a military establishment which formed a National Accountability Bureau as a front organization against me to divert attention from he was Prime Minister, he's never disowned the National Accountability Bureau. In fact, he's gone on record to the Daily Times of Pakistan to say that he can't even claim the cases were fabricated because otherwise Saifur Rahman would end up going to jail. He's more concerned about Saifur Rahman than his new ally Benazir Bhutto. I have not seen that statement which you referred to. Daily Times to. of Pakistan, I 17th know. May, Gulf News, 16th May. Yes, I hear you, but I have not seen that statement. I have heard Mr. Nawaz Sharif publicly speak about the need to withdraw the politically motivated cases that have been instituted against the political opposition. Most recently, in the ARD meeting, of which a statement has been issued. Okay, let me quote to you the senior Pakistani journalist Hamid Mir writing in the Jung on the 27th of March, just four months ago. He said that Nawaz Sharif had accepted money from Osama bin Laden to overthrow your government of 8990. And the Daily Times of Pakistan says that this was an allegation that you yourself many times made in the past. Today, for reasons of political expediency, have you forgiven and forgotten everything that Nawaz Sharif has done? I do not believe in the politics of political expediency. And to update you on the politics of Pakistan, Mr. Nawaz Sharif broke with the military establishment in October 1999. Okay. And all that you are quoting to me is before October 99. Absolutely. So October 99 is the watershed. Everything that happened before it changes. Everything that happens afterwards is different. All right. No, Let's I'm sorry. That. That's your wording. It's not my wording. Let me give you a second reason why people are skeptical of your new relationship with Nawaz Sharif. Ministers of the Musharraf government repeatedly say that both you and Nawaz Sharif are in direct touch with the president of Pakistan to sort out private deals for yourself. And in your case specifically, the Pakistani Parliamentary Affairs Minister Sher Afghan Niazi says that you've had 12 direct conversations with the president. These are false stories fed by the ministers and I'm very surprised that a senior journalist such as yourself would raise such a question without asking the minister for evidence to support what he says. Hamid Nasir Chatha and Mia Mansoor Watu, uh, both of whom were close associates of I yours, you say they are brokering a deal with the president on your behalf. I want you to know that my husband was held for eight years in prison in solitary confinement and I never reached an agreement or a deal Did with Musharraf. Did you ever have any contact with Musharraf? Because my concern has always been for democracy, constitution, and the rights of the people of Pakistan. All right, let's look then to the future. I have suffered for them, You're but so right. have my young children, and so have my party people. I accept So have the saying. people of Pakistan. Let's then look to the future. And you and Mr. Nawaz Sharif have, have called upon... We have principles which my father gave his life for. Let's then I talk about Pakistan's the future, Ms. Bhutto. Future you, you've called for the president of Pakistan and, and the prime minister to resign. That you've we given must them a fight deadline. for democracy because that is the destiny of the people of Pakistan. Right. That is why Pakistan was formed. Ms. Bhutto, and that is what we me, are struggling for. Permit me. We have put your, the past behind us because we don't want to be chained to an unsavory past. Then let's look to the future. You and Nawaz Sharif have given a deadline to the President Mr. and Prime Hamid Minister of Pakistan. I want you to know, before you come to your next question, that never had Mr. Hamid Nasir Chatta or Mia Manzoor Watu ever said they acted on my behalf. It's they do, of course. With you, that question, hasn't it? No, but I want to set the record right. You see, I don't let interviewers just be, put questions be, You should be, you should be setting me. the record right with the Pakistani press. The Pakistani press have reported that these two gentlemen claim to be brokering a deal. I have not seen that Pakistani press. We have a large and vibrant Pakistani press. But I know Mr. Hamid Nasir Chatta and I know Mr. Manzoor Watu. Okay. They are both people who are important political personalities. And they've made and the they allegation? Would, no, they have not. They would never make such a claim. Daily Times of Pakistan. So what? The newspapers often print things that are wrong. But neither Mr. Watu... So you're saying the Daily Times is wrong? I'm saying Mr. Watu and Mr. Chatta never said something All like right. that. Let's move beyond Mr. But Watu Mr. and Mr. Watu Chatta. Let's not get Mr. obsessed Chatta. with them. Let's, no, let's, let's, let's clear the record. Will we clear the Mr. record? Watu I think you cleared the record. Mr. Chatta, I'm glad you think I have, but I must think so too. Mr. Watu and Mr. Chatta do believe 
the general Musharraf's persecution of the PPP is wrong. All right, let's now stop at that. And that's that for continue. democracy. I want to talk to you about the. I'm no, letting please. you continue. Let, let, I'm letting you continue, but you must also note that I would like we're always wasting to time, set Ms. the Bhutra. record we have right. Only 20 you minutes. are wasting time because you don't let a person answer. Ms. Bhutra, both you and Mr. Nawaz Sharif have given a deadline to the President of Pakistan and the Prime Minister of Pakistan to resign by the 31st of July. There are roughly two and a half weeks left, yet neither of them look as if they're going to pay any heed or advice to you. So what are you going to do? The ARD parties gave a warning to General Musharraf and Mr. Shokat Aziz to resign over the steel mill scandal. And they're ignoring it. The Supreme Court of Pakistan noted that there were omissions and commissions right. in but the that's privatization. The what will you do on the 31st when they ignore your demand? And we feel, in answering your question, that it's very important for the nation to know about the loot and plunder that is taking place, which is why we intend to move a no-confidence vote, for which purpose a committee has been set up. And if the resignations do not come in by July 31st, a no-confidence move will be considered by the Alliance for the Restoration of Democracy. All right, let me put this to you. General Musharraf, meanwhile, has suggested that he is likely to use the present existing assembly before its term expires in November to get himself re-elected for a second term. That's something that you're wholly against. You said it would be immoral. You said it would be a political fraud. But there's nothing you can do to stop it. Um, I do believe that the present assemblies were elected for five years, and legally, General Musharraf... Sheriff Ghan Niazi, Parliamentary Affairs Minister, disagrees. He says that the present assembly has the mandate to re-elect General Musharraf if it so chooses to do. Right. People can give their views, but a five-year assembly cannot elect a person for ten years because that would be double its mandate. Its well, mandate is for five years. But the point years, is that, don't you see what's happening? General Musharraf is trying to set the stage in such a manner that he gets not only re-elected, but continues, in fact, as army chief as well. You don't want that. But there's nothing you or Nawaz Sharif can do to stop it. You see, we have a military dictatorship. And so long as General Musharraf exploits the armed forces of Pakistan and exploits the international war against terrorism, Get away with anything. No, he can try to sustain his dictatorship, but that doesn't mean that the Pakistan People's Party or the people of Pakistan have to accept his Except dictatorship. Except for the fact that the Charter of Democracy and your rhetoric it. doesn't give you any strength because we the cards continue. are in General Musharraf's hands. You see, if you want to play politics in Pakistan whilst he's in power, you either play it on his terms or you don't play it at all. That's the problem you face. I think you sound a little bit like the British Empire and what the Indian Congress had to face when fighting it, because at that time the Congress was told Absolutely. that you play by the rules, but can they you, the can rules. Can you get Musharraf so to change the rules? Do, That's the question I'm driving at. People have to do what is right. People have to fight for what they believe in. And in the blink of an eye, the situation can change. The reality was that Hitler's troops were at the gates of Stalingrad, but Hitler was defeated. Ms. Moto, that's history. Let's take we a break. I wanted to ask you after the ah, break, you don't have like you history. got the courage you... to actually force the change on a dictator? You did it once in 86 when you were 20 years younger. Can you repeat history or is age, experience and the disillusionment of running two governments against you? That's the subject after the break. Can Benazir Bhutto go back to Pakistan and repeat history, or is the challenge too daunting? See you in a moment. Welcome back to Devil's Advocate and an exclusive interview with the former Prime Minister of Pakistan, Benazir Bhutto. Ms. Bhutto, we ended part one asking whether you can repeat history. If you can go back to Pakistan, start a movement that gains momentum and threaten the generals, you can. But have you got the courage to do it? Yes, I can repeat history, and yes, I do have the courage to do it. You could end up in jail. Are you prepared for that? What is jail? What would happen to your children? Not what would happen to your husband? What would jail. happen to your mother? All of whom are dependent on you. Are you prepared to set them aside? My husband is uh, not dependent on me. They my... need your moral support. Your children of need your moral support. Of course they need my moral support, but my husband and my family appreciate that I have a commitment to the people of Pakistan, a commitment which they share. They have stood by me in this very dark decade 
when I have faced the military establishment. So Benazir Bhutto is prepared to go to jail if need be? Of course. In which case, let me ask you bluntly, when are you planning to go back? I plan to go back to help my people for the election campaign of 2007. When exactly? I will let you know through a press release of my media office in Islamabad. Jahangir Badr, the Secretary General of your party, has publicly said in Pakistan that Benazir Bhutto will be back before June 2007 so that she celebrates her next birthday in her country. Can you confirm that? You may ask Jahangir Badr about his uh, statement. But he's your Secretary General. I'm not aware of the statement that he has it given. It was in the Pakistani papers. Many things come in the papers which are not true. So you're disowning either the papers or your secretary general I'm, or both? I'm doing neither because I've not seen it and I'm not going to take your word for something I haven't but seen. But you're giving me nonetheless but I am telling you, you will be back before the elections. Yes, and my media office but, but can I interrupt? will Does announce yes mean the a date. definite yes? Yes. The reason I ask is because many times in the last three years you've given similar commitments and you haven't returned. And people wonder, does she intend to really go back? Well, I disagree with you. And I challenge you to produce one statement from my media office saying that I will go back. I will give you statements given in interviews to Indian television channels, sub-TV, statements given to Hard Talk Pakistan when you said that you would go back before the elections that were due at that time. Oh, and you did not go back. Oh, excuse me, you're talking about 2002. I did plan to go back in 2002. I filed my nomination papers. But you never went back? I did not go back because I was illegally disqualified and there were cogent reasons which I would like to share with the audience. The cogent reasons were that the military dictatorship was claiming that if my party won a majority, it would not stand in the way. They claim the same and thing. I, they just make one the minute. same claim again and they let you down again. Have you just got the courage to defy them? That's what I'm asking. Just one minute. I'll come to your second question. And therefore, to call their bluff, knowing that I could not be elected since they had illegally disqualified me, I did not go back in 2002. It's a very elaborate explanation. Who called whose bluff is the question? Did General Musharraf call your bluff? Because at the end of the day, he got what he wanted. You remained in exile outside your country 5,000 miles away. Well, you can put it that way, but I called his bluff because he was forced to postpone the parliamentary session and factionalize my party and put to an end his false claims right. that he was ready to restore Let's democracy. Let's come to 2007. But You're come saying to 2000... you definitely will yes. go back. Yes. That is a 100% commitment. Yes. Even if the elections happen in Pakistan after General Musharraf has got himself re-elected, and even if they happen when General Musharraf continues as army chief, even in those circumstances, you will still go back. Excuse me, I'm not going to go into whether he is re-elected because he cannot be legally re-elected. But that's a very likely possibility that I will he will answer be regardless the question, of the legality. I will answer the is question. Is that your escape clause? I, no, but I will answer the question as far as it pertains to my return. I will return. But for you to say that, oh, he's going to be elected as president. He says it, and I he's don't. Going to be, or his for you to quote him, it, or his ministers, to say this, I don't want to be drawn into I'm that. I one consider thing. that Will you go illegal. back for any type of election that happens, or will you only go back for an election that suits you? I have said I will go back for the elections of 2007. Full stop. And in case you're hard of hearing, I never said in an election that suits me ever in my life. So you will go back even if General Musharraf has already been re-elected and these new elections are happening under him? As I said to you, him. I do not believe that he is legally entitled to be re-elected. But All I'll right. say it again in case it's it The critical it. question, Ms. Bhutto, is this. In 1986, when you were 20 years younger, you went back. And there's no doubt about it, you changed the character and history of Pakistan. Do you really believe you can work the miracle twice? Yes. You're 20 years older, you've done two terms as Prime Minister and many people are disillusioned with your performance in office. And most importantly of all, General Musharraf is not General Zia. The odds this time are stacked against you. Well, I think I have far more popular support now than I did in the past. I believe that How people... How do you prove that? Well, in the last general elections, I got the largest number, my party got the largest number of votes. And just recently, General Musharraf rigged the elections in Azad Kashmir because my party was going to sweep the elections. He hasn't been able to hold one election which is not rigged. So are you really telling so me I that from 5,000 miles away you can sense that the people of Pakistan want to vote back to power, the PPP? Do you get that feeling? Are you really saying it? Well, I do get that feeling and I'm not 5,000 miles away. I'm there in the assemblies. I'm there in the local council. I'm there in the villages. I'm there everywhere through the PPP worker 
who was my personal representative. So Benazir Bhutto believes that whenever the elections are held, she will be so back I in office as prime minister? Uh, either as prime minister or president, I hope. But as uh, if the people of Pakistan so wish, and if the opposition so uh, wishes. So what's your gut instinct? Most, uh, Do you believe certainly. that, in fact, events are moving in your direction, that you will be prime minister in 2007 after the elections, if they're held? I uh, believe that I have much greater support now. People in other political parties have also worked with me and respect the fact that I am committed and my party is committed. And there's no question of a of side Pakistan. deal with General Musharraf to ease you out of the problem of having to face up to jail? If there was a side deal, it would have occurred before my husband lost the best years of his life. Now. Why would it occur? Because suddenly you I sense an opportunity. You. The suddenly opportunity, you believe at 50, maybe you don't want to go through jail again. That you may feel at 50, but I don't. If you go back and, and I feel that somebody who has suffered so much and paid such a high price for what they believe in, must continue the struggle to final victory. And I will do so till my last breath. Then let me put it like this. Does the fire burn as strongly in Benazir Bhutto today, 2006, as it did in 1986? My commitment to the people of Pakistan. What about the fire? I don't know what fire you talk because about. Because it was, it was I the always... determination to bring change that took you back and that took you into I the call... teeth of the Zia dictatorship. Do you have I that strength? I call that commitment. You have that strength I still? call that commitment. Strength, I have the strength, yes. And you're prepared but for I call jail, that so a commitment. What is jail? I've been in jail for nearly six years. My husband has been in jail for 11 and a half years. My whole family has spent nearly 30 years in jail. You talk about jail as though it is the end of the world. In which Obviously, case, Obviously, you Bhutto? have never been in jail. Otherwise, you wouldn't ask me such a silly question. In which case, Ms. Bhutto, since you're smiling, Let's take a break and come back. And in the second interview, I want to talk to you what a future government led by you would mean for relations with India and what it would mean for the Kashmir dispute. That's part two of this special series with Benazir Bhutto on CNN IBN. In the meantime, goodbye, good night.